Coming to you from our opulent and luxurious 4x8 refurbished broom closet at the National Headquarters in Indianapolis. With duct tape, studio lights, and a mic that you barely can hear, we hope to entertain and educate you. This is the Tango Alpha Lima Podcast. They call me crazy because I'm facing all my giants. They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it. They tell me I should never even think of trying. But that's just me. I'm going to live out in defiance. All right, hello, 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 and welcome back to the Tango Alpha Lima podcast. I am your host, Mark Seavey. The I don't remember what my title is, but I'm here at the National Headquarters of the American Legion. I'm joined, as always, by Ashley Garbolja Moldonado out of Washington, D.C., and Jeff Daly out of Los Angeles, California, or Hollywood. I'm not actually sure where he is specifically. Uh, and we are going to uh, skip our usual jocularity here at the beginning because we have two great guests, and I know, at least from Jeff and I's perspective, we've been looking forward to this one all week because we've been texting back and forth. And we have today with us uh, the director and the breakout star of 2020 from the uh, documentary Boy State, which is uh, rocketing up the, uh, the world here, if you will, through the uh, Apple streaming service. Um, and I'm going to give just a brief bio on Jesse. Um, he's a Sundance award-winning director and cinematographer. His new film, Boy State, which we're going to be talking about here, co-directed with Amanda McBain, premiered at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival in the U.S. Documentary Competition. The film was awarded the Grand Jury Prize and acquired by Apple in A24. Boy State was selected to be the opening night film of new director's new film presented by the Film Society of Lincoln Center and the Museum of Modern Art. The film was released worldwide on Apple TV uh, in August 2020. I know at least Jeff and I have had a chance to watch it. It is spectacular, so I can't wait to get into it with you guys. Um, now, I have been a counselor at 20 different boys' states, uh, from California to uh, Minnesota, and I've done like 15 in Virginia. I've also been a counselor at Boys Nation, so this is a topic that I was very eager. I'm not, generally speaking, a documentary guy. Um, although I will say right now, Jesse, that my plans for tonight have been upended because I am going to go watch Full Battle Rattle. Uh, having been to the National Training Center that you that you talk about in there. Uh, and Stephen, so excited to have you here. And we'll, everyone who has seen the film is no doubt aware of, of what happened, but we don't want to, uh, we, don't, we want it to be somewhat spoiler free. Um, and as much as I want to actually start with Stephen, because I got about 15 questions for him, I'm going to start with you, Jesse. And I think as is natural, um, you guys, first of all, you have like 94% on Rotten Tomatoes, something of that nature. Um, and uh, so when something is that high, I generally look at the other side. And one of the criticisms, which I thought was completely unfair, but it... it uh, from NPR actually stated it the best and this one wasn't a bad review but it's like either the filmmakers were extremely lucky in their choice of subjects or they shot so much footage that they were able to isolate the most compelling personalities which if you haven't seen the documentary they got four awesome ones but in any event the four young men who spend the most time would uh, end up playing key roles in the experiments nerve-wracking outcome and I think that that's a fair assessment. Which of those was it? Were you able to identify these four beforehand, or did you have, say, 10 that you were tracking at once? Well, hey, Mark, thanks for having me on the show. Sure. Um, hey, Jeff, hey, Ashley. Uh, Mark, I think we're going to do our best to turn you into a documentary guy. Um, <laughs> and uh, I do hope you get to check out Full Battle Rattle. Um, but, um, you know, I think it's a combination of... of luck and, and talent. I think we did um, find three of the four young men in the film we found before Boy State started out of a cast of a thousand. And look, we're we're not doing this for the first time. I think we trust right. our instincts. And we knew that these these guys, Stephen, uh, Robert, Ben, and then Renee, who we met later, were special. Um, yeah. We didn't know how well they would do at Boy State. Um, we knew that they were going to run for governor. Um, and But you think when you make unscripted films like Boy State, you, you depend on um, the hand of fortune or fate, um, the documentary gods. And I think they sh they, they looked down upon us and, and we did get lucky. I'll, I'll accept that. We did not put our hand on the scale. Um, there were a couple of kids that we met beforehand who ha we had our eye on, but they didn't do well. Um, they, they just kind of got cold feet, which happens, as you know, being a counselor. Some kids yeah. come in with grand ambitions and they kind of fizzle. 
Um, and so we turned our attentions to the to the boys who we had already met, who we knew were going to do well. And that Stephen was one of them. Yeah, and that was uh, that was one of the things that I, having been a counselor for so long, even when I first meet the kids, I've got a fairly good feel. Uh, as soon as they walk in, there's kids that stand out to you. Um, and, and you know, right, right off the bat, kind of that this kid could be going places. And I thought one of the great things was that you obviously shifted to that fourth boy, Renee, um, as the film went on. And you obviously had enough of his background to, to make it even more compelling. And you really did get quite a cross section of humanity. Can you talk about that just a little bit? Well, that was really important to us because what we love about the program is it brings young people together with really different backgrounds, really different politics. And that's what's so special about Boy State and Girl State. And I think, um, as you guys know, too, that's a really rare space in America today where people with different views are actually getting together face to face and talking to each other, trying to find common ground. That's what attracted us to the program to begin with. Um, and we hope to see some of those conversations across party lines, across different backgrounds. And so we looked for boys who came from different places. Stephen, um, who we're going to hear from, is a Bernie supporter, also worked for Beto and his campaign for Senate. So he's decidedly left of center. But Ben, who we also meet, is a Ronald Reagan uh, fan. He had a Ronald Reagan doll on his bookshelf when we went to uh, interview him at his house before Boys State. And we love that they have different backgrounds. That's what we wanted to represent. Yeah. And I actually will throw one over to Stephen because we're already going to go along on this. So we're going to throw caution to the wind. But uh, Stephen, what has this done for you in terms of, you know, your publicity wise? Like, I, do you get recognized out in public now? Do do people you haven't heard of from years call you up and ask you for a loan? I mean, what's uh, what has kind of been the notoriety you've gotten out of this? Well, not too much in public because you know we're all you know stuck stuck at home for the most part. I'm, I'm doing yeah. online classes virtually. Uh, just just like two days ago, I was in my um, my class group chat for government, and I was giving them a fact about the Senate race in Massachusetts. And then somebody said, "Hey, that's really interesting. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're Stephen Garza from Boy State." <laughs> uh, and I said, "Yeah, yeah, I am." And you know, I've had people you know reach out that I haven't heard from in years, like, "Hey, yeah." You know, <laughs> it, it's been you know the the response the, the response has been overwhelmingly positive and just overwhelming in general. Um, very fortunate to be able to, you know, meet these people who, you know, are, you know, like I consider anybody a friend uh, around the world, not just here in the United States, but a very strong response from people outside the U.S., especially in Canada, Australia, the U.K., Japan, everywhere. It's been uh, it's been surreal. Awesome. Awesome. Jeff, you're up. Wow. All right. So I, my question is for both of you, because. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here in Hollywood, which is part of Los Angeles, Mark CV. So <laughs> Hollywood is just an area of the city. It's, it's just of west of here. It's, it's all west city. of here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering in both s situations how the having a camera crew affected. <clears throat> so Jesse, do you think <clears throat> having a camera crew follow these guys around got them noticed a little bit more and maybe helped them succeed as opposed to to you just capturing what would have been successful anyway. Um, and then, Stephen, you've got to, uh, you, you, you had to have enjoyed uh, the, the, the kind of popularity that goes along with having a, a, a camera crew around. And I'm sure you've, you made a ton of friends and, and it probably enhanced the experience for both. So I'm gonna start with, let's start with Jesse. Like, how, which way do you think that relationship went? Did you follow successful people? Or did you help people become successful? I think that Stephen was going to be successful with or without us. I think you see that in him. And he's got the work ethic, the integrity. Um, he's able to reach across. The camera can't do that for him. Um, he, Stephen gives, um, I think we discover in the film, we know he's p politically sophisticated. And he's going to work hard. What we don't know going in, in is, can he give a speech to 600 boys? And that, um, I, this, I think it's not spoiling too much to say that he can really give a speech. And the yeah. camera doesn't, uh, uh, I think, make him uh, have that talent. That's in him to discover. And so I think as documentary filmmakers, look, the camera is there. We're there. We're, we, you know, we have relationships with these people. We don't pretend we don't exist. I think it's also a little bit like national politics. You know, the presence of a camera might 
legitimize one candidate over another candidate. But there's also so much going on at Boys State, you know, that I think um, quickly the boys really kind of forgot about us because they had more important work to do. I think Stephen speaks eloquently to this question, Jeff, and I think it's a great one. Um, so, uh, Stephen, what would you say? Yeah, for sure. It's a, and yeah, it's a question that was asked during the week, and and no, uh, everybody who went to twenty eighteen Texas Boys State doesn't know what to expect. So for all the cameras to be there, maybe that's just what actually happens. Nobody knew that this was going to be uh, the big thing that it has become. You know, we didn't know if it was just a project for the American Legion, for Texas Boy State, internal use, whatever it was. And there were seven, seven camera crews running around. Uh, the four subjects, would, for the most part, always have a camera crew on them. But they would also just go off and film whatever stuff. If my camera person on me saw something going on, on the other side of the room, he would go over there. He would leave and, and, and go film that. And they're filming all these speeches, these conventions, these party meetings, the band, the talent show. You know, the, the camera wasn't just super exclusive to us, but just kind of capturing the entire program as a whole. And in terms of influencing voters, I don't think it did because uh, you see in the film, I'm actually alone a lot, uh, kind of just by myself. And that's just more or less me trying to get away from everything and, and, and just hear myself think. Um even with the camera crew on us, you know, I still struggle to get on the ballot. You know, uh, all of us face electoral uh, challenges without giving too much away. Both, you know, everybody, me, Robert, Renee, Ben, and, and Eddie with cameras on us. Some some of us make it far and some of us don't, you know. So I think it, it turns ahead every now and then. But by the second day, they're just, there's camera people here. We're focused on what's going on in front of us versus who's documenting what. But my experience... And I did in- notice... Sorry, yeah. I was gonna say I did notice that you uh, you you did spend a lot of time in self reflection. I also noticed over the span of just one week, you changed, man. You went you your your confidence swelled up, and your your volume turned up. And I think you felt I don't I think you felt the the power to release. Stephen Garza onto not just Boy State, but to all of us in the world. And so my question is a two part for you. Did you feel that for that week? And two, I know you've seen pictures of presidents from year one to year four and how they age. And I know you're going into <laughs> politics. Does that worry you? Mm. Also, that for, I mean, Boy State aged me 10 years. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, it, I think the part, I mean, I would, I go back as a counselor now for the program. So I, I went uh, in 2019 and then we did it virtually this year and I was also a counselor for that. And we were super happy that we were able to pull that off successfully. But I, I think most definitely it's a, you know, a huge confidence booster. And where else in the United States or anywhere are you going to get a chance to dip your toe into? running for office you know usually when people run for political office it's the real deal they have to invest money they have to invest time away from work they have to hire people there's stakes and there's consequences at boy state you could find out can you give a speech to an audience can you hold your own in debate can you take criticism and 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 not let it affect you that much can you win over hearts and minds and sway people who may not agree with you to your side uh so just having that experience definitely i think uh People, you know, it's it's a coming of age story, but it's a coming of age story in a week, and it's definitely a crucible for for many many students and especially me to go in there, you know, the reserved and you know maybe timid and, and shy kid, a little bit awkward. I definitely a lot awkward in the beginning, and by the end of it, kind of trying to command the room and and you know have something draw, you know, just. It's 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 an ego boost and it's also a confidence boost to know that damn I could do that I I can do that you know and just you know as the support grows especially in you know without giving away that first speech it starts off kind of slow and as the more receptive the audience becomes the louder I get and the louder they get the louder I get to the point where I'm there's a crescendo of them applauding and of me banging my hand on the podium and yelling and pointing <laughs> uh you know it's uh it's indescribable and, and it's such an experience that's uh invaluable to anybody who's going to continue pursuing politics in their professional life all right uh Ashley you are up all right so mad kudos so uh, 
just for the group's knowledge, I just started my second master's in public leadership, which is directly correlated with like policy, civic leadership. So this is incredibly fascinating. And I, you know, I myself have never had that, that week of, of coming of age. And it's so, it's just so awesome. And I'm so proud of you. Like just the way you articulate and come across, I'm, I'm just impressed. And Jesse, thank you for, you know, bringing this uh, to the attention of, you know, millions of people. People don't necessarily always understand what Boy State is. They just think, oh, it's a Legion program. And what I want to do is just, it, um, you know, Stephen, if you could just elaborate a little bit more about b what Boy State is, because some of our listeners, they know what it is, but maybe they don't have direct, um, that's what I'm looking for. They don't necessarily have that direct connection. So if you kind of just explain it, um, so that way just everyone has a little bit of situational awareness that are listening in. So they're more inclined to say, you know what, I am going to check this out and I am going to go bump that up and get it a 98% of Rotten Tomatoes. Right, Jesse? <laughs> Definitely. Let's get it up one or two points. That would be fantastic. I'm down. <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, so American Legion Boy State and Girl State are, are programs held all across the country. Uh, every summer, typically, it's it's usually it, it very you know the act the actual events in the state vary, uh, but for the most part, it is basically a week long crash course in self governing. Uh, the statesmen, you know, as they're called, will have to uh, form their own state governments from the ground up. They will be divided arb into arbitrary parties that have no meeting, just basically yellow versus blue. Uh, and then they're in charge of what that party means to them. If they wanted to make a very liberal platform for that party, they could. If they want to make a conservative platform, they could. A moderate platform, it's completely up to the boys, and they're split in evenly, uh, as even as it can, you know, depending on numbers. And then they form their own platform. They start running for offices. They form a state legislature. They, you know, propose and pass laws, and it all eventually culminates in the big race for governor who will be the governor of of boy state and girl state it happens in every state in the union except hawaii i believe mm -hmm. uh since 1935 and it's just it's a, there's so many famous alumni uh throughout the program you know there's the famous picture of, of bill of a young teenage bill clinton shaking hands with president john f kennedy Dick Cheney, uh, Cory Booker, Michael Jordan, Neil Armstrong, James Gandolfini, John Bon Jovi, and Richards <laughs> from here in Texas went to Girl State. It's uh, you know, it, it, it's 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 interesting that a program like that that has so much, so many famous alumni, not just in politics but in business and in science and in sport, is not that well known to the public really. It's it, and since the two years since filming has has ended explaining what boy state is to some before the documentary came out is very hard to do to somebody where you hey you, you go to austin for a week and you form a government from the ground up with some adult supervision but very minimal in terms of like hands off learn by doing motto it is uh an amazing program you know uh, it, it's an amazing program for for both um boys and girls and i'm really glad that the that the legion has has kept that up kept up with that uh for the past you know 80 years yeah awesome I, did you want to go next mark yeah. oh because I, I have one follow up from jesse yeah i have one follow-up so okay i thought it was really interesting the way they explained just kind of these arbitrary parties right you got blue and yellow um you know I, i'm sure there was contention right you know not everyone's gonna agree and everyone's got everyone is coming in with these just amazing diverse backgrounds can you describe kind of that the first moment where you just you just stood up for what you thought was best and how you went about whether it was in a um uh, whether it was in conflict resolution or kind of swaying your party to kind of lean a certain direction now what what was really your methodology behind that well i knew going into texas boys that immediately you know you're i'm aware that i'm in the the racial and political minority it's very obvious i was very bold to wear a Beto for Texas t-shirt the first day, <laughs> thinking well, like, oh, you know, there might be some, a bunch of, of, of liberal people in this program. And, and, and you know, there, there were some, but it was, you know, if it was, you know, pretty conservative leaning. And so it's it's walking a tightrope. Um, you have the added pressure that you're on, you're on camera and what you're doing is going to be immortalized in a film. Uh, so I knew that I wanted to be true to myself and, and, and stick to my guns. 
but at the same time, there was no point in me going to. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you know, it was an interesting uh, phrasing of stuff that. Um, it's I, but I also I'm also you know uh, politically aware and 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 have the you know the knowledge that if I go up there and I give a speech on all these progressive beliefs that I have. They'll boo me, and I'll get one vote, and then that'll be the end of my story in, in the Boy State film. <laughs> um, and so uh, it's walking a tightrope. And so I was thinking of, of, you know, what is something that I could, could rally around? What is something that I could call these kids to action on? And knowing that the kids had voted to secede the year before, and me having some pretty personal feelings about secession and, and the Civil War in general... You know, it's something it, it, for me. It felt like something that you know we could all agree on that. Hey, we're Texans, yeah, but we're I think Americans first, and so that's where I, you know I was hoping to just run on a, a very you know a uniting the you know never I've I don't ever ever once attacked the Federalist Party, which is my opposing party at once because I knew that I'm going to need their support, and so I tried to pick a unifying theme, and that was that we're we're pro America, we're pro Texas. We can do both, and and if we work together, we can achieve achieve something truly great for the state and country. But then, obviously, halfway throughout the film, a wrench is thrown in my political plans, and I have to pivot to speak more specific on what policy beliefs I, I hold near and dear to my heart. Excellent, that's amazing. All right, we are. Yes, sir. I, a quick question for you: You do know the, about my many many years of service in the American Legion, right? Y'all three of them? Well, not quite. Not quite. Three. Not, I'm sorry. And I will say that to Stephen that I didn't know what Boy State was until I joined the American Legion. And I also know that your story does not start in Austin. Your story started at a post somewhere. Uh, I've never witnessed that process. Can you can you uh, explain to me <laughs> the the process of getting selected to get to Boy State with the American Legion? Yeah, I, I know it, it varies by state. Sometimes they're just picked and they're like, you get to go. In my experience, uh, I was a, a Navy junior ROTC cadet. Uh, my uh, naval science instructor recommends me to the counselor. He gives a list of the counselor and, and it's you know, like these kids would make a good, you know, I think would make a good fit. And so to the counselor of our school and then the counselor will then nominate me to interview before a board of legionnaires. And from there, they will ask you questions about you know, like at the beginning of the film, like what does the flag mean to you? What do you think about this country now? For me, that interview experience wasn't really focused on that. Uh, it's a very prestigious and somewhat competitive program to get into. It's supposed to be a thousand of the best that Texas has to offer. I'm a very average student. <laughs> so I remember that they spent the almost the entire time talking to me about my grades and me trying to convince them that like, hey, well, yeah, I'm not good at, you know, I'm not doing so good in math or science, but let me tell you why. It's because I'd rather go to this political event than do my math homework. Or I'd rather go, you know, organize or, or make phone calls or do this and that. And then they saw that I had a real passion for it. And they're like, okay, fine, well, you know, you have the heart, you know, you, you don't have the grades, but you have the heart. So, you know, congratulations, you're going you're going to Texas Boy State. And so we had to attend an orientation at our local post. Um, and that's where I actually met Jesse for the first time. They standard orientation, what, you, what you're going to do, what to expect, what to bring. Uh, but before we, we start with that, we have two guests here. Uh, it was Jesse and, and Torsten, who's one of the cin cinematographers. Uh, and they just want to tell you a little bit about what they're working on, and, and they explain that they're making a documentary on this program. Um, they were looking to maybe cast four or five subjects, is what they had said, you know. And we were like, okay, cool. He asked if a, a few of us could sit, you know, if we were interested to kind of stay back. And after the orientation was over, and you know, about 12 or 15 of us did, we sat at a table uh, while Jesse and Torsten filmed us and observed us. Uh, talking about what we expected, what we hoped to do. Uh, again, I was kind of the more reserved, quiet kid, and I would give my my two cents every now and then when I seemed when it seemed appropriate. Well, some kids were kind of over animating themselves to get the attention of Jesse and and <laughs> Torsten, and what for whatever reason my my you know my silence or my you know reservedness caught Jesse's attention, and I get up to leave, and he's like, "Hey, can I like talk to you for a little bit?" Uh, and I said, sure. We, we talked for a, a couple of minutes and then he asked me, like, can me and Torsten, like, take you out to eat? 
and get to know you a little bit? And I said, sure, you know, I free food, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and then we do that, he gets to know me a little bit more. We do about an hour interview on those steps that you see in the film out there. And then at the end of it, he asked me, would you like to be one of the subjects? And I said, absolutely. Uh, and then, you know, a, a month later, you know, hey, we're sending a cameraman to come follow you on, on your way to Austin. And then that's where it started. All right, let's take a quick commercial break here, and we will be back with you in just a second. Did you know the American Legion magazine is the most frequently read periodical in the nation? True story. Find out why by joining today at legion.org forward slash join. All right, we are back, and we are joined by Jesse Moss and Stephen Garza from the uh, documentary Boys State, which anyone listening to this, if you haven't seen it, you need to go out and see it. Um, this is not a complaint about the documentary because the documentary would have had to have been about a, a mini series of like 50 hours to cover everything that's at Boys State. So to anyone, the one thing that I would say is that when you watch Boys State and it's mostly <clears throat> talking about the races for state party chair and the governor, and there are hundreds of other, literally hundreds of other elections from the the point where we see Stephen starting to run for governor. Do you, how many were there in your party that initially started running for governor, do you know, that filled out the 30 names? Uh, we had 14 people on the ballot for, for, for governor and the nationalist side. Yeah, that's, that is 14. You assume it's probably similar on the other side. So you're talking 28 kids there. But on top of that, you have all kinds of races in your city, in your county, other statewide elections, which are like the age, the attorney general race, I assume you guys have, and probably lieutenant governor or something of that nature. Um, and one of the tough things for me being a counselor is that, and this happens every year, is that I will have a kid who will come up and he'll run for one thing and he'll lose. He'll come up and run for another and he'll lose. He'll come up and run for another and lose. And we might go through six or eight elections before the kid finally gets elected. And to me, it's always great that those kids finally, it pays off. However it pays off, that it finally pays off. And I don't let any kid in my city leave without a, some sort of title from the city, whether I have to make it up or not. But Stephen, can you talk about some of the races that don't appear in the thing and some of the other activities now i know we talked about or you see in the documentary that there's like the uh the uh the show the talent show and you get to see a little bit of the band and some other things but can you talk about some of the activities that were not covered yeah definitely and so what's very interesting is i believe the first day the uh counselors you know we when we're all together they tell us straight up some of you have never lost before in your life. Some of you are, are champions in sports or in government debate. Well, some of you who have never lost are going to lose this week. Yeah. You're going to run. You're going to lose your election. You're not going to, you know, that and that that's life. You, you, you don't win sometimes. And it, it, it puts that into the perspective that, you know, it's a, to go to go for it. And, who, you know, who cares if, if, if you lose, you know, at least you, you, you went for it. And I knew plenty of kids who ran for everything uh and and really put their heart into it and would eventually win something and then there was people who would run once and then lose and then just be part of the the background for the rest of the week uh the it's amazing the amount of activities that go on in just six days you have you know they're forming they're forming parties they're having uh meetings for their what their platform is going to be what the rules are for their party uh what the campaign side is going to be like social media and posters and all that. You have a, a whole newsroom, <laughs> the Texas Boys State Network is what it's called now. It used to be called Texas Boys State News, where they're running, you know, a, a, a news show and they're going around filming stuff, doing interviews. They have a podcast <laughs> uh, yeah. during the week that people listen to. Um, the band uh, will, will, you know, before they... When you apply, you get to put down if you have a special talent, you know, like like if you're in the band at your school, uh, bring your instrument and then you will you will learn on the fly all of these songs that we play. You know, the, the national anthem, Texas or Texas, the Boy State song, uh, which, you know, is going to echo in my head until the day I die. You probably um, will. Yeah. You know, and then the um, there's recreation time. So you see a little bit of that where it's organized sports. There's basketball, there's um, there's football and there's uh 
dodgeball and it's an Olympiad. And they we keep score, and at the end of the week, we have the big championships of which city is, is the dodgeball winners. My city uh, in 2019 won the dodgeball tournament, which nice. is really, really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, yeah, so there's, there's just so much. It's, it's, there's the, if you can't find something to do at Boy State, if you get sent by, like, your counselor and your mom or dad makes you do it, and you're just, there's something for there. If you're a band kid, go join the band. If you're into sports, do the Olympiad. If you're into debating and government go you know do the um run run for office if you're into social media graphic design join the campaign committee there's something for everyone at voice state and there's also just forming the friendships that that will last a lifetime with your with your city it's just uh, amazing where else can you uh get that in anywhere just that the amount of diversity in a week i wish that there was something like that for adults to kind of work out their differences. Uh, you know, if we, if we force <laughs> them to, to, yeah, you know, if we force them I, to be in that I, situation, I'm going to be opposed to that just because I can't handle any more time in a room in a college dorm with someone my age would drive me out of my mind. But uh, yeah, there's, there is a lot going on. And, and Jesse, I, one of the things is that um, the secession talk is obviously got everyone's attention and, and can, I think Kansas a couple of years ago, there was a vote to disenfranchise women or something. And, and these things stand out. And, you know, a lot of people, are, there was a reference to how it was like a political Lord of the flies, which I don't think is entirely <laughs> accurate either, but uh, we we're balancing two things, uh, I think with boy state. And that one is that these are 17 year olds. They're going to behave as a 17 year old. And so we see it in the movie that one party chair uh, is impeached, uh, and I, I can't even tell you how many times I've seen an impeachment on a boy state. I mean, we've seen it. I've seen governors try to be impeached. I specifically remember once we were having a board of directors meeting for boy state, and the governor was being impeached, and the legislature threw out the media people who were supposed to be covering it. And so the media people went back and got all the kids fired up, and so there was this basic riot as the legislature met to discuss impeachment and all the kids are outside banging on the walls like you know and there was just mayhem but that's what you're going to get when you meet with these kids what what did you think i mean it do you agree that it's just kind of kids being kids to a certain extent and that I, and i specifically note in the documentary that we see counselors for probably less than two minutes in total in the entire documentary which is phenomenal as far as i'm concerned because the it's not supposed to be an American Legion program as much as it's the boys running the program. But can you talk about how you managed to, to pull that off and, and what you think about these kids and, and what they go through in a given week? Sure, well, as Stephen mentioned, it's, it's a program that values learn by doing. And that, that means letting boys and girls, I'm sure, make mistakes sometimes and work things out and sometimes the hard way. What attracted us to the program initially was that secession vote. We read sure. about that in the Washington Post in 2017, and it caught our eye because it was a playful, provocative gesture, right. but it was also clearly reflective of the mood of the country and the divisions that we, people were feeling and that politically things kind of weren't, um, you know, there was, uh, you know, but sort of a problem in the body politic and the boys were feeling that and expressing that. And that's where we felt like it would be a really valuable conversation as filmmakers to have. And I think to some extent when we got there, we expected to see impeachment and secession uh, uh, gestures. Um, what, what we didn't expect and we did discover was the whole other side of that, which is really thoughtful political discourse, compromise. We also saw vulnerability as a counselor. I'm sure you've seen it. You know, you do see kind of boys being boys and sometimes they, they do you know, things that they probably regret. Actually, one young man in our film does something in a speech that I think he now regrets. Um, it's a kind of crude gesture, but it, w it was finding vulnerability and intimacy and the other side of boyhood actually on display that was a, a welcome surprise. And I think the sort of whole tension of the experience is that it doesn't kind of sand off the rough edges. It sort of lets this group discover for themselves what the shared values are. And I think someone like Stephen who summons the electorate, these thousand boys to their better angels. Um, it was beautiful to see that they're willing to heed his call and they're not just there to cause trouble and cast provocative votes. They're really looking like we all are for something better. 
Yeah, it, it, it just a kind of, there's a couple of moments in the movie that kind of were my favorite. And again, I'm not an art critic. I'm not even really a documentary guy. But some of the scenes I found compelling, and there wasn't really anything going on. So there was one scene where the boys stopped and talked to a turtle. And I was like, that is so boy state. That happens all the time. And I think, Stephen, you even talked to a squirrel at one point, didn't you? Yeah. And, yeah. and that, that was exactly what I see at boy state all the time. And the other was uh, the young man who was playing piano while everyone was eating chow. And I thought, uh, for me, the greatest moment of the entire film was when you had something like 28 signatures. And you were going around to find those last two. And, you know, it kind of leaves it dark and you don't know. And then you show up at the basketball arena and you told the other demo, yeah, I, got, I finally got my two. And that was kind of a crescendo moment. So I just... I, I can't say enough good things about it, but I'm monopolizing. So I'll go to Jeff next. You're up, buddy. <laughs> All right, you ready? So what uh, I identify with you a lot because I don't know if you can tell, I'm a quiet, shy kind of guy. Oh, yeah. And I barely talk. And yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's, that's me. And then uh, with Boys State being in Texas, I was so thrilled and proud to see maize and blue as the two team colors. And I know Ashley is going to love that. Because go blue, Michigan. Now your speech, your first speech, uh, where you started out, you started out kind of shy, and then you and the audience both crescendoed. What with my first question? What with with no audience? What did you plan for that speech to be? Because, uh, and and Mark brought it up earlier that there's a lot of crescendoing theme through the film, and you did that. I mean. And I was I watched that and I was I was like oh that, yeah you know that's a nice kid whatever I hope he does well and then by the end of your speech I was like this kid is the dude yeah. right here and I I'm just curious how that speech was planned and differently than how it came out. That's the it's it's like writing a, an essay and um, it's on on the topic of films I I I like watching on on, on YouTube these uh, comparisons of. Uh, a scene being acted out in a film and what the screenplay uh, directions are, what the dialogue is, because some of the dialogue that is written doesn't sound good at all. It, it sounds very like it sounds very unnatural and very, very weird and, and not good. And I'm sure that that screenwriters have that problem of, of writing dialogue because. But well, when you see it being acted out on screen and you have some some wonderful actor who was able to take those words that don't seem that well written and turn it into you know a like, very iconic scene in, in film history it's it's very amazing and so i i had no idea how the crowd would react which is why i begin off slow and i assume that this speech would probably end up being uh a, a more solemn one and a little bit more you know just give up there and and speak in the same tone and if they don't vote for me, they don't vote for me. But at least they, there would be that kind of sense of self-reflection at the end if it were quiet. That I, I didn't say anything goofy in my speech. I didn't make a joke. It was a, a very serious topic. And that if I walked off stage to silence, then at least that they would be reflecting on what I said. But it wasn't until that they start res being receptive to me and that I have to put my hand up to get them to stop so I can continue that I start realizing that this speech is take is is now coming out differently than I intended it to deliver it, and if if they're fired up, why am I going to keep being so monotone and 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 you know so like okay I'll get a little bit louder, and they would be like oh they're more receptive like I have to keep going, to the point where I'm yelling and they're 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 giving me you know a standing ovation before I'm done yelling, uh and then just just that that feeling is so you know. I even say in the film, like, I don't remember what happened when I went up there. It, 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 you know, it's a natural instinct that, that kind of takes over, and it's just... I can't tell you how often yeah. that happens, too. I had, I've had kids that'll write out, like, a four-page speech, and I'm like, don't bother. Like, within the first 15 seconds, you're going to be feeding off what they're going to... Like, it's fine to have bullet points, but, boy, your speech could go one of two ways pretty fast, and yours obviously went in that direction, which was great. I've seen well, some. Just, it brings, just, oh, go ahead. Sorry, just, Jesse. Yeah, wanted wanted to say, uh, having worked in politics years ago before I went into documentary film, um, I think there are politicians on the national stage who do not have Stephen's gift to connect with audiences yeah. emotionally, to 
to summon them oh. to to um the, the moral challenge that he presents to that electorate in that room is i think requires a lot of courage and yeah. and again is a, is a kind of gift i think um that he carries with him and is based on his life story and experience and i was so beautiful to see um and because the program also is as you see in the room it's it's um pretty representative of a kind of more conservative part of texas and i think he's coming in there with politics and an experience that are just a little bit different than, than the room. But I think um, he, he builds that bridge. And I, I just think, you know, it goes without saying, I, I'm excited to see what he's going to do uh, if he does go into electoral politics, because I think Stephen has a rare gift. Well, that kind of brings me to my follow up, because like I've talked about the or somebody else brought up the crescendo theme, and you had that crescendo theme in your speech. And then I see in every meeting of the parties, there's a huge crescendo and people get fired up and 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 just super excited and intense over a party that doesn't actually exist. So then it, it then it then it makes me wonder how much does Boy State mirror the tribalism and the the extreme loyalty to a team regardless of what the platform ended up being, they were loyal to that team. And I mean, to a frothingly, like, especially level. Ben. <laughs> right. So how much do you, and now that you're, you're studying, you're studying in this arena and you're documenting and, and have worked in this arena. I wanted, I'm curious your perspective on how the boys state microcosm mirrors the macrocosm. If that's a word, I may have just made one up. I think it's a great question, and I think something that we're, we have asked ourselves about the program, because it does uh, provide this two-party structure, which, for better and for worse, reflects our current political reality. And I think it makes sense that the boys would have to work within that system. That is the system we live in. But I think you do see in the film, and we see in national politics, too, a, a kind of tribal identification that seems to sometimes trump uh, sort of common purpose, right? And I, th I think there's a cost to that. I think you know, we provide a quote at the beginning of the film that comes from George Washington about the, the hazard of the party, a party being um, kind of hijacked for the wrong purposes by the wrong person. And I, I just think that uh, it's a question I'm sure that individual state programs at Boy, Boy State, Girl State have confronted, like, should they allow third parties? Should they sort of allow a more fluid shape to the political state that is built uh, in the program? And I think some programs have experimented with that. But I think that for our purposes to sort of take the temperature of now in our country politically through the through the eyes of young people, it was actually kind of great that it is a two party system. Yeah. Um, and the, we get to see the tribal identification both in positive ways, but also negative ways. All right, Ashley, you're up. A... <clears throat> oh. Did you have something oh. else, Jeff? Well, we kind of skipped. We kind of skipped Stephen's yeah. perspective. On oh, that. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. No, oh, no, oh no, no, no problem. I'm okay, here, brief. Um, I think the, I mean, immediately, the parties are kind of pit against each other, which I'm not sure if that's the healthiest way to to go on about doing it. I think if it happens naturally, then it happens naturally. But I think I hope to see one. You know, in, if I I plan to go back as a counselor every year, I can. And I hope that one day I get to see both parties decide not to do that and kind of just try to work together and run candidates on healthy, friendly uh, competition rather than, you know, feds uh, go Nats. And even myself, I, I think I just thought about this right now, that I also fall, I, I, I'm also susceptible to, to that kind of tribalism where uh, I give a podcast and I say, I'm a nationalist. What that means, I don't know. But then when I accept my party's nomination, I yell nationalist. I, I wave the flag and I yell it. And it comes from this, this desire to, to lead the, this party to victory because they're the ones who supported me. And uh, I go out there, start waving it, and I start chanting yes, yes, yes with them. And, and, and that takes over. Yeah, it's weird to think that that, that just happened. That, that wasn't anything that was planned. That was just natural. The, the guy who had the guide on next to me, you know, was I was just there very nervous and they announced it and I cheered and I took the guide on from him and I ran up there to the stage and I started waving it. It's uh, it, it, it naturally takes over. And it's it's interesting. The you know, the concept of, you know, should there be allowed to 
third parties be allowed. I know that the they have a very set schedule and they have only so many uh, areas and rooms that can be rented out that a third party, it just isn't feasible to put them in anywhere else to have their own convention or anything like that. I think in the future, what I would like to see at Boy State is the formation of, of caucuses within the party that adhere to a certain ideology so that members who are more like-minded can vote as a block uh, to advocate for what they want to rather than just the bigger, noisier people making the decisions for everybody else in the back. There you go, Ashley, you're up. I just, I, for, what was the word you used, Jeff? The the micro, what did you say? Micro macrocosm. System. Macro, macrocosm. Macro the ecosystem. Macrocosm. <laughs> sounds like a, sounds like a sandwich. Um, <laughs> I digress. So, uh, one of my questions is, as someone, like I mentioned, like I am kind of diving into this realm myself, um, You've kind of explained a little bit, um, Stephen, about your, like, you know, this coming of age, kind of coming of boyhood story. And what would be the message that you have, you know, for those that are, you know, aspiring into, you know, or, or interested in politics or interested in boy state? And then, Jesse, um, from from your take, you know, what were you hoping at the, the large, I guess, macro ego Cosm, whatever Jeff said, at this macro level, was was your goal and your takeaway? Um, I, you want to go first, Jesse, or sure, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I think that well, first of all, we went in without an agenda, really, just to to observe, to to sh to experience this through the eyes of these four young men, and I think to present the audience not kind of a simple takeaway. I think people come to this film with different politics, ideologies, and backgrounds, and that's okay. And you know, it's not a prescriptive movie, um, but I think the strong message, which is a message that I think is at the core of the program, is that democracy is not a spectator sport and that, um, you know, we all have a role to play and we have to find the right path. And you see these boys, Stephen and the others, find their own path. And, and now that they've graduated from the program and they're still, um, uh, they still want to engage, um, Renee has become more of an activist. Robert is at West Point. Um, and plans to serve in the military. I think that um, service comes in different forms, but I think that 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 message of, of democratic participation that the program embodies and that these guys all embody in different ways is to me the valuable takeaway now because we recognize that democracy depends on our kind of collective commitment to its health and vitality, that it won't um, kind of heal itself or preserve itself. We have to do that. Yeah, there's there's so many you know young people that have reached out to me and and that's that's where I get most excited about what the film can do is is energize uh, young people teenagers and, and young adults to to get involved and get themselves out there. I've had countless messages sent over to me by people my age or slightly younger or slightly older saying that they were inspired and motivated to do something and like what do I do? What do I do? It's like well do whatever you're, you're, you know, you feel that would, would be best for, for you and your community. I mean, uh, it's, it's never too, I don't, I don't believe that anybody is ever too young or too old to run for, for, or to be involved in politics and definitely don't believe that anybody's too young to run. If they can vote, they can run, you know, because a, a common trope I hear is, oh, you don't have life experience. Well, what is the prerequisite mm -hmm. for life experience? I've had many experiences so in my own, in my own personal life that uh, have made me you know, I've had to mature at a younger age than a lot of people. I've experienced and done a lot of things that adults haven't done. You know, I've, you know, and I can hold my own against some adults in a debate. So, you know, I, you know, I can vote and, and you know, I don't care that, you know, why does, you know, having a, a college degree or why does a college degree or being a lawyer or being a businessman a prerequisite to be a, a politician or be successful in, in politics? It's not. And I hope that that's what people take away from this film. I, I think about right now, uh, Ed Markey, the senator from Massachusetts, beat a Kennedy uh, in, in his own home, home turf the first time a Kennedy has lost in Massachusetts. Thanks in part to the online organizing of a bunch of, uh, of Zoomers, of Generation Z, they, we, call it, they, we you know, call ourselves Zoomers as a, as a play on, on, the, on the word boomer. They, you know, they played a huge part in his election by, by you know, he was, Marky was down by 16 points two months ago. 
And this summer, they, they worked their tail off and they phone banked across the state, across the country. They organized, they, they fundraised. They really got the word out to support some 70-something-year-old yeah. man who has a very mixed record when it comes to progressive policies, but made overtures to the young people saying that, I need your help. Please, you know, we can we can we do this together? And, and he won last night. Uh, with their help, and it's amazing. Just when, when when I think politicians can realize that if they run on, they, if they run positions that are meant for the younger people who are going to be here, and you know the decisions that are being made right now in Washington by a bunch of seventy year olds are going to affect me for decades to come, uh, long after they're no longer in office or or even alive. And so I hope that this film is, is a call to action to teenagers to get involved uh, in public service. And all four of us in the film have gone on different ways about doing that. Robert is going to serve this country as a military officer. Uh, ben hopes to serve this country in national security and, and defense uh, in the civilian level. Renee hopes to, to use activism to, to create the, the change that this country needs that sometimes only activism can do. And then I myself hope to, to continue pursuing electoral politics uh, to help candidates that I believe in win office and then you know work for them in, in government and help them pass legislation that is beneficial to to the people. So that's what I hope is, is the overall message of this film, especially young people that get involved and there's not just one way to do it and there's no prerequisites to meet. You know, whatever age, you know, I got involved at 14 years old uh, and I've been in it ever since, and I have a lot more experience than some people who are in their 20s or 30s do when it comes to politics. There's no age to get involved, and you, you need to. I mean, the health of our democracy uh, needs that, needs that participation. I appreciate that so much. I have always been, um, I've always been favored to tell folks to, to volunteer, because I believe Volunteerism is one of the greatest forms of democracy. You know, you can line up and vote once a day, but when you're involved and you're volunteering in your community, every day you're making the active decision to better that community. Um, so, you know, I, I know as a, a legionnaire, like that's what we do. And I'm so happy that this program has opened so many doors, not only just for yourself, but for the other, you know, folks that have been participants and have continued to participate. So I really appreciate you both just providing just wonderful insight on this. So I don't know if Mark wants to. Well, I, I was just going to say as a, as a, as a lawyer and a native Massachusetts, I can tell you the only thing it prepares you for is having a winning NFL it. team. That's, that's about it. <laughs> Everything else Man, is gravy. I, just want, I want to jump in and rip on you for being a lawyer. I know. Steven, I, I, <laughs> as well, you should. Steven, Believe me. Right now, you exhibit not just on, not just in the film, but even today, so many attributes of leadership, and we we talk about we talk about leadership a lot in the military and veteran community. But the the fact that without prompting, you named every other person that was featured in the film and what they're doing. First of all, you gave a crap about what they're doing enough to remember it, and then <laughs> you thought it was important enough to. To, to, to tell us about it and how it fit into the bigger picture. Um, I'm super excited to see what you do in what you do in the future. Um, and I'm not I'm not afraid to say I'm a fan. I've been a fan for all of two days. I'm on the bandwagon early on yeah. ground level. Uh, and another thing that you said struck me and it, it's something I've been thinking about and I'm, I'm gonna do a, a, a I do another podcast on my own and leadership is going to be a, a topic and the thing that you something that you said about being younger and about uh why does having a college degree matter why does being a lawyer matter i think we get bogged down in credentials over character absolutely and the way that you led people who did not think like you and they still followed you and the display that i just mentioned today I think is a pathway for uh, creating a model of leadership that may be more effective moving forward. So I want to thank you for that. And then I'm, I'm wondering, and I'm going to put you on the spot to be philosophical. And I'm wondering what your what 
your thoughts are on uh, effective leadership or are you just like Michael Jordan you just do it and don't know why and how I don't know uh, I, I think uh, and, and that's something that you know I, I've always had an interest in in, in the military and, and in, in government and politics you know they're also you know much related you know in the history of, of, of human history are so much are so closely related uh, you know to the point where you know I'm hoping that when I go back to UT Austin, I'm able to en enroll in, in ROTC and, and hopefully, you know, my, my hope is to pursue a, a military career after college uh, and, and, you know, serve the country that has given so much to opportunities to me and my family, uh, come home and then be able to serve my, my community in, in a different way, you know, in politics. So uh, I believe, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I believe, you know, I, I mentioned Napoleon a lot throughout the film and and being you know in in JROTC leadership is a huge thing and it's um learning to 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 follow first before you lead and it's also uh being an, an active listener and and taking uh you know there you look at some some leaders in history that uh again i guess napoleon is the best example i can think of that uh, what the odds are stacked against them, you know, and and he's facing these overwhelming overwhelming odds, and he truly, I believe, cared for every single soldier that he sent into battle, and was able to inspire them to to call them to their to their 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 better selves, and that that ability is is I don't think, and very humbly, is something that can be taught to people they, they they it can be taught to some people in terms of, of using it in their in the way that they're uh in charge of other people but i think it's a natural instinct of of caring for the people that serve under you of of hearing their needs of meeting their needs of making sure that they know that they're appreciated that their opinion matters that they're part of this team with you and that instead of focusing on leadership positions and titles that you you know a leader should just be a first among equals uh, and then knowing that everybody is 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 needed to ensure the success of a team, whether it be sports, whether it be a military unit, whether it be a political party, making sure that everybody knows that they're wanted and they're needed and they're appreciated and their efforts are are noticed by those in, in leadership positions goes a long way to just the morale, you know, because if, if you know, if you're a French soldier and the emperor just came up to you and 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 gave you this amazing speech and looked at you in the eye and so you know you're gonna go fight like a lion it doesn't matter if you're outnumbered three to one uh you if you know if somebody tells you that you're gonna be motivated you're gonna be inspired by them and you're gonna you know uh you follow them <laughs> follow them to hell you know if you know people said like you know if napoleon you know if napoleon said if i ever invaded hell this is the army that i would want with me uh that goes a long way those 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 words of affirmation and the genuine uh, love and appreciation for those who serve under you uh, is, I guess, the the way that more leaders nowadays should think not about just me, 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 and use these people as a stepping stone to reach higher positions in whatever they pursue, but as as real people who have real needs and who need somebody to motivate them. So that's a, a little bit not not the the one sentence philosophical quote that you may have been looking for, but. <laughs> I just uh, before we before we go, I, I have two parting thoughts. And the first is I've been a counselor for so many years and I've started Facebook groups for all my kids. One of the greatest things is seeing six, eight years removed from Boy State, what they're doing, uh, going into the military and everything else. Jesse, I hope that sometime down the road we get a chance to get these four boys, you know, back into a room now they'll be adults, so maybe over a couple of cold beverages and you can talk about your experiences <laughs> since. That'd be absolute must-watch TV. And I will say that uh, in order to watch the movie, I have three kids under five at home. So instead of watching it at home, I came to work. And as always, I had my office door open. And Stephen, when you called your mom and uh, started crying there at the very end, I had to get up and close my door. Because uh, there's certain things that uh, co-workers don't need to see a combat infantryman doing in his office. And sobbing would definitely be one of them. So that was, uh, was a very emotional. So, you know, there's your hanky warning to anyone who hasn't watched it yet. 
Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. Jesse, so much. Thank you so much for not just joining us, but making this uh, come about. It's such a such a great documentary, and again, I'm looking forward to watching Full Battle Rattle tonight. So, guys, thank you for joining us, and we'll see to all our listeners. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.